So guys, we've picked up a nice, another little solid hatchback. I'm getting quite a nice collection of little hatchbacks at the moment. These are good sellers. You don't really go wrong with a Toyota Yaris. It's a newer shape than I normally sell. This one is a 2012 or 62, so midway 2012. It's the 1.33 VTTI engine I've done a lot of. They seem to be tough, chain driven, so you don't have to worry about cam belts on these. And the Yaris is always popular. They hold their value really well because they are considered the better models. Can't remember the exact mileage. We'll pop in and have a look in a minute. Uh, new discs and pads on the front. New brake caliper by the looks of it. I think we've got a new brake caliper there. I'm sure the owner did tell me that it had that. Uh, tires seem all right. This does need an MOT. Um, yeah, both sets of tires are right. It does need an MOT for in October. So I'll have to get it down and get an MOT. It's dirty, obviously, but it will clean up all right. White is, doesn't really offend anyone, does it? Yeah, tyres look all right there. And they're branded. I don't know if the front ones are or not. Paintwork-wise, there's no paintwork to do. The headlights need a machine polish. And uh, like I say, we get down for his MOT. But bodywork-wise, it's all really nice. Can't remember the exact mileage on it. Let's have a little quick look. Is it unlocked? You have to excuse the strip in the background. That's what happens this time of year around here. We got uh, electric windows, electric mirrors. Oh, we've got a little, because it's a later one, we've got a little um, LCD screen for the stereo. Let's get the battery going. And 91,000 miles, which for the age is acceptable. We've got this, like I say, nice little stereo that's got, what have we got on here? Looks like we might have Bluetooth. Yeah, Bluetooth audio. So you can connect your phone up and play your order for it. Six speed. So they are good on the old fuel. Air con. Interior is tidy. Again, it's a bit dirty, but nothing that won't clean up. Obviously, five doors are normally a little bit of a better seller for me because they just um, they kind of suit everyone. But the younger people tend to like the the three doors. Just check how she starts up. No chain rattle. No starts up on the button. Yeah, this is going to. This is going to clean up into a nice car. Now this car is actually going to be super cheap. Uh, it's going to be about 20, 25% cheaper than these cars normally are. These are normally up for 4,495. Is Auto Traders recommended with this year and age mileage. This one's going to be 3,495. So we'll bring out our old friend Car Vertical to show you exactly why. For those of you who don't already know, Car Vertical is the largest online database of vehicle information so if you're out buying cars and you want to check the vehicle's history you, well you should always be checking the vehicle's history car vertical is the one to use as always it's on my phone ready to go all i need to do is enter the reg number so wn62 nuf check the vehicle and uh, let car vertical do its thing so car vertical has done its thing and we've got the report back for the Irish. we say it's okay for theft it's okay for mileage it's okay for finance but we have a yellow notice here to say that there has been previous damage. If we scroll down, like I say, we can see a nice consistent mileage graph. That's a lovely consistent mileage graph. But we scroll down further, it says the vehicle was damaged. It was marked as an insurance write-off. And down here, it said that it was a category N repairable, non-structural, meaning nothing chassis-wise, anything majorly important, just outer panels were damaged on the vehicle. And that was the 8th, 2022. Now Car Vertical will often not only tell you there was damage, it'll actually show you the damage as well. Let me show you this example. When somebody checked the Suzuki Vitara with Car Vertical, you can see it was okay for theft, okay for mileage, okay for finance, but like our car, it had a yellow warning for damage. If we scroll down though, you've actually got photos from the salvage auction where this vehicle was sold from. Initially, it doesn't look too bad, but if we look at this picture here, we can see that actually this has damaged the inner wing on the car and this would be classed as a category s this is something you'd absolutely want to know about before buying this vehicle and you would want to negotiate really like 30 percent discount minimum as always there's a link down below for you to get a car vertical with a nice discount if you're out looking to buy cars perhaps a friend is perhaps you never checked a car you bought before you get yourself a car vertical done let's say the link is in the description down below and use the code on the screen now 
to get yourself a discount. It's so important because members of the public do not need to tell you, unlike the person that sold me this car, that it has previous accident damage on the register. So make sure you get those checks done. So the person that sold me this did actually show me where the damage was. Um, they actually did the fix themselves. They needed, I think, if I remember correctly, a new headlight, a new bumper, possibly a wing. So basically it was a light impact on the side here. So category N, non-structural means it cannot be anything internal. It can't be a chassis leg. It can't be an inner wing. It's all going to be bolt on a panel. It's basically, like I say, the kind of damage that gets done by insurance companies all the day and the cars never go on the register. So as I always say, this is a fantastic opportunity for someone to save a bucket load of cash on a car because there is no way that a 2012 Toyota Yaris um, that you're buying at full price has never had paint. The odds are absolutely minute. They are most of the stuff you're buying and you're paying the full price for is going to have had similar levels of damage. It's just done when the car was young enough that it was worth fixing. So this car and and the benefit of this car is normally crash damaged cars don't come with any history. This one's actually come with all of its history as well. We have excuse the motorbike. We have a stamp book, which is very rare. We've got full main dealer service history right through to 17 there. Actually, right the way through to 21, we've got full main dealer service history. Then a stamp in the book, owner service. Well, at least if you can do it right in the book, which is the right thing to do. First, the 12, 2022. So we've got pretty much a full service history on this car as well, which, like I say, is pretty rare. So full service history. Mileage is decent. Condition of the car is really good. The repair is not an obvious repair. If I hadn't pointed you to where it was, you wouldn't see it. So I am more than happy to buy cat cars like this because this, like I say, I'm going to be able to put up at 3495, which is my sweet spot for selling cars. Someone's going to get a 2012 rather than probably a, well, maybe a 2009 at this price point. Uh, Yaris's go for good money, don't they? Probably, yeah, it's probably a 2009 normally at this price point. It's a TR, so you've got the alloys, you've got all the extra bits and bobs in it. Yeah, nice little car. And um, I, I just really don't understand the attitude of people that turn their nose up at stuff like this because at the end of the day, if you come to sell this in another three, four years and it becomes a car that is two and a half grand, two grand, who the hell's going to care? Uh, from my experience, they really don't. And like I say, the other cars you're looking at have uh, most likely had the same level of damage. I understand the concern over like Category S, structurally damaged car. If you haven't seen what the damage was and you didn't know what the repair was, yeah, you, you're right to be cautious. But Cat N, bumpers, wings, lights, doors, that kind of thing. I honestly goodness don't know why people worry about it. There's so much stuff I don't understand. Like I said, you know, people say about insurance, but I've never known a cat end put someone's insurance up. Second thing is people worry about the value of the vehicle. Well, as long as you're buying it 25% cheaper, then you can't get hurt, can you? Well, 20, 25% cheaper on, on something like this. Cat end is about 20% and then cat S is about 30%. So the only reason you get financially burnt is if you go along and pay full price for it because someone hasn't told you it is a category car. And, you, and then you go to part exchange it or whatever and... Um, you know, obviously it's worth a lot less. So yeah, as long as you do it the right way, I don't see the problem with it. Right, Adrian's just packing up. Adrian a &K Van Services, giving me his fantastic services as normal, dropping cars off for me, picking them up. This is why I don't bother doing it myself, guys, because Adrian's so brilliant. Um, bulletproof, reliable, always looks after the cars. I have a little test drive them, gives me feedback on them. If you're in the, in the North Devon area and need anything moving, house moves, because he's got his vans as well, car moves, I'll put a link to his Facebook below. Um, been doing this for me for a while now isn't he absolutely brilliant but yeah he's just dropped off my latest car um a vw golf 2010 um i'll bring the full spec up on screen in a bit but the thing that the biggest thing with this car that's going to be of interest is that this car i've been sold as a category n non-structurally damaged vehicle i'm told that the claim was for the windscreen and this dent in a wing now I don't know. We need to have a long test drive of this car and find out because what can sometimes happen is people can get, take a troublesome car. Some of you remember some of my earlier videos where people take a troublesome car and do minor damage to it and then put it in salvage auctions and say that it's, you know, obviously make an insurance claim, it goes to a salvage auction and people think it's it's okay but for that like damage or a dealer buys a, a wrong one does a dent or damage like this then sticks it through the salvage auction and it goes for better money than it would do with the mechanical fault because people look at these things as easy to fix 
Right, as if I wasn't putting the home-built guys to work enough, they want to go and get some lunch while I've been working on the MGB. So I don't know where that is in this video, whether we put that video out or not, or that video is coming soon. But the boys are here at the point they were doing the MGB. They wanted to go and get lunch, and I said, look, why not test drive the Passat for me, because it's got MOT on it, and I've got my trade plates there. Why not test drive the Passat for me and give me the feedback? Because... I'm suspicious. I've been told, boys, I haven't even had a chance to speak to you about it, that this is a cat N for that windscreen and for that dent in the wing there. Is now, okay? yeah, now I'm suspicious that it isn't a dealer who smashed the windscreen and put his knee in the wing and then said it goes to Copart and it gets, because obviously the public can bid at Copart, so cars go higher than dealers would bid on them. Or whether that's genuine, it's just by the time you've done a wing and you've done a done a windscreen on a Passat on a Passat on a um, Golf this age Golf estate this age that they would um, not want to do it I didn't get a chance to tell what the mileage was guys we've got the keys there a second yeah, it's very dirty it needs a hell of a clean the mileage is du, 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 du. It says it wants a service I know we have got some service history when's the mileage come up on these V dubs then Hundred and twenty four. Hundred and twenty four thousand miles. Which again isn't outrageous for two thousand and ten and for a diesel. It's got three quarters of a tank of fuel, guys. It's given me a pair of shades as well. Come with a pair of shades. The rear seats, all the fabric looks like it could be okay. Just just needs a good clean. It's the two litre TDIs. That's not the PD engine then, is it? This no, is no too light. Message. What is that? they look stunning on you, mate. Absolutely it, stunning. So yeah, it's um Oh, wait, there's stuff in the back. Wait, there's there's stuff in the back. We've got freebies. SKF Bairns. Something's been done to it. Oh, I think he was giving me the. I think he was giving me the, the cam belt kit with it because he intended on doing the cam belt. So he gave me the cam belt kit with it. Nice. So that's water a nice old bonus. Around. Yeah, water bump because he didn't have any history for a cam belt on it, and these do like a cam belt, don't they? So um. Right, so we're gonna get the home built guys to take it for a drive and come back and hopefully not tell me that the gearbox is duff or they immediately get an EGR warning light on it or something like that i think this is a car for me not to do massive amounts to and punt out the door for cheaply because one i'm massively overstocked and i have another 10 cars in various locations i just added that i'm scared myself yeah i've got all this all the stuff inside and another 10 cars in other locations um so I, I need to start getting to a point where i do a little bit less on the cars i think sell them with the mot's they have and just give them a basic cleanup obviously this would need a windscreen first we could probably pull that dent out with a dent puller so uh, yeah, we'll let the boys get off and then they give me their feedback when they're back. So the all important cake run has been done and we're gonna get Steve's feedback on the Golf. So what, how do you find it? This is a good car, a really yeah? good car. Clutch feels good, brakes feel good, no knocks, no bangs, plenty of power. Unlike uh, other Volkswagens, there's no engine management light on. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's really good, it just needs a clean. A windscreen clean retail. Do you think I'm being too suspicious? I think so. I don't know. I don't know, I'm just... Well, I guess... Well, well, I might use it running home and back tonight as well, just to double-check it. We need to... So how many times do we need to cycle the key on one of these for an engine management light to come on? Three. Three times, is it? Yeah. So we'll take a couple of ones. Right, OK. Go and get the cake. So that'll be one. All right, well, we'll give it another little run and, and see what turns up. We just... We know in this game from Chop's Garage, you should always be a little too... You know, a little suspicious of all this kind of stuff. Well, there's plenty of diesel in it, so you may as well use yeah, it. Yeah, three quarters of a tank of fuel. All right, thanks a lot, mate.